Good evening, everyone. Michelle here with Home with Olympus. Uh, we're happy to welcome you tonight to Home with Olympus Live. Um, if you're not familiar with Home with Olympus, this is our virtual education and connection platform with you guys, our customers, and our friends and family of Olympus. Um, tonight is going to be an actual special session because we have a special guest on our class workshop tonight for our live composite. Olympus educator Matt Seuss is going to be here to teach us about the different ways that he uses this awesome feature, which is actually my absolute favorite feature in our OMD cameras. Um, so let's introduce our educator Matt Seuss and get him in here, all right? Welcome, Matt. Hey, thank we're you. We're so happy to have you. Hello, everyone. I'm excited to be here, and we're going to have a fun time. I'm, I'm really excited about this presentation. Yes, I'm excited too. I'm really interested to learn about how you use this feature because I know it's a little bit different than how maybe I use it or some other people might use it. So it's always really cool to see new ways to uh, try different features. Yeah. Um, we've got a whole bunch of people in here saying where they're from. Where We are being joined from all over the world tonight. This is yeah, fabulous. We've got uh, Rick from Albany, New York on YouTube. We've got Judy from Atlanta on Facebook and Yvonne from England on Facebook. And uh, Peter saying no sound, but I might want to check your setting there. Uh, I don't see everyone. Oh, Peter said sounds okay now. Great. We got Jane from uh, from France. <laughs> That is awesome. I want to challenge everyone who's who's in a colder area. I'm in uh, Bozeman, Montana, and it is four degrees outside right now. It's actually warmer than what they forecast. It was supposed to stay in the minus digits all day today, getting down to about minus 20. We're in a little bit of a deep freeze. And I think uh, I got a feeling that there's a couple people that are experiencing the same thing out there. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. I don't think the one from Florida, Boynton, Boynton Beach, uh, who is that? Uh, Michelle, Michael, I couldn't see that went by too quickly. Uh, <laughs> New Hampshire's in the 20s. Oh, awesome people from New Hampshire. I'm originally from New England myself. So, uh, but up here in Bozeman, Montana now and loving it. Seven degrees. We got a seven degrees in Kansas, it looks like. Okay. All right. We're fighting for some lows here. So it looks like my volume might need to be a little bit louder. I don't know if you're able to bump that up a little bit on your end, Michelle. I can let me see what I can do. I'm going to crank you as let's see if that helps. All right. Yeah, let us know. And uh oh 81 in South Florida. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm over on the West Coast in the sunny side. It's like 64 degrees today. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> it's nice and cozy over here. <laughs> oh great. We got someone whose uh brother lives in Bozeman. Uh Archer's uh, brother lives in Bozeman and shoots with Olympus. That's great to hear. Nice. All right. So why don't we go ahead and kick it off? I'm going to say goodbye to all of you because I know you guys get sick of doing Home with Olympus with me. And we've got our, our new special friend here tonight. So we're going to let Matt take over. And we have our team in the comments section tonight. We'll be answering your comments on both Facebook and YouTube tonight. And um, we will also highlight some questions for Matt as he goes along. We'll be able to address some of your, your questions, especially ones that are specific to him. All right. Thank you guys all for joining us. I'll see you later. All right. Well, awesome. Uh, yeah, like I was saying, I am uh, Matt Seuss. I'm a fine art, nature, and landscape photographer and Olympus educator up here in Bozeman, Montana. And I've been shooting with Olympus for, oh boy, I think like two years or so, ever, ever since the EM1X came out. And uh, I got my hands on that camera, fell in love with the camera, fell in love with the whole system. I was shooting those big, bulky, full-frame uh, cameras from Sony prior to that and Canon before that. But then uh, once I got these uh, Olympus cameras in my hand, um, just felt amazing, allowed so much more creativity. And we're going to be talking about one of those creativity uh, inspirations that I got from the camera system, which is one of my favorite, and that's Live Comp. And in this presentation, I'm going to go through and talk about Live Comp, talk about some settings. And then I'm going to go through a lot of uh, scenarios that you uh, you may be familiar with. Some of you may be familiar with some of these uh, scenarios, you know, like maybe star trails and long exposures on clouds or even fireworks. But I got some other ideas, too, that uh, hopefully at the end of this presentation spurs some creativity for you and your own photography.
So I'm going to start off. Uh, has anyone not is anyone not familiar with live comp? Uh, go ahead and post that in the uh, in the comments section to be interesting. And even if you are too, if you know, let me know if this is one of your favorite features inside of Olympus cameras as well. I'd be interested in hearing that. Now, basically, what live comp is is it records a base photo, a base exposure photo. And then after that, it takes additional photos. And all, when it, all it's doing on those additional photos is recording any new light, any new light that is brighter than what your original composition, your, your original exposure was. So for example, if you're taking uh, night sky images, uh, star trails, you'd set your base exposure and you might be able to see a little bit of your foreground, depending on if there's any moonlight at all or not. And you'll see those points of stars. But then as you're running live comp, the star trails actually start forming on, your, on, on the back of the image. And I was introduced to this in person uh, a few years ago. I was teaching a photo workshop in Grand Teton National Park where it's, it's fabulous for night sky photography. And I was getting, I was still shooting Sony at the time and I was uh, telling all my students we were gonna set up for about a 45 minute or an hour long exposure. And so the technique that we were gonna be doing was you take picture after picture, you set your camera up on a, uh, you know, on a timer and it just automatically takes picture after picture, you know, usually like about 30 seconds or so. So if you're going for a 45 minute exposure, you know, you're looking at uh, what, 90 photos that you then in Photoshop combine together in layers and use the light and blend mode and then you get your star trail. and. I started doing that and I noticed one of my students, I, I wasn't hearing his camera clicking at all. And I was like, um, you know, hey, uh, Wayne, what's going on here? Um, everything all right? And he's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm doing great. I'm getting some great star trails. And I'm like, uh, what do you mean? <laughs> he's like, well, I'm shooting with Olympus and it has this feature called live comp. And I'm like, I've never heard of that before. What's going on? And he's like, well, I don't need to take all those pictures. The camera's doing it automatically for me. And I can see the results right now in the back of, back of my screen. And I went and I looked at Wayne's camera and I was like, whoa, this is really cool. I mean, it makes doing these photos so much easier than having to, you know, do all those, all the photos, you know, taking 90 different raw files and then have to having to do that in post-processing, put them all together. And, you know, once I saw that, I was, I was just hooked and I was like, I got to explore the system a little bit more. So we're going to go through that now. If you, you know, almost all the new cameras or all the new cameras and, and some of the older cameras on Olympus do feature the live comp. I'm not going to, usually you're, you're adjusting your shutter speed and you adjust it down. So you get down to like 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, then you'll get to bulb and then there'll be a cell a bulb and then a live comp will eventually be at the end of that. That's for a lot of the cameras, uh, the newer cameras, like the, um, I got the EM1 X right here. Uh, the camera that I'm actually looking in right now is the Mark III. Both of those have a bulb setting that you can get to live comp with. Uh, but if you have any questions on how your specific camera gets into live comp, go ahead and put that in the comments and we'll have someone from Olympus that will be able to answer that for your specific camera model because each one is just a little bit different. But we're going to go ahead and take a look at my camera over here. And right now we're looking at my screen. So I'm in manual mode right now. If I then switch it, bulb. I have, by adjusting the shutter dial on my uh, on my camera, I have the option of going to bulb, to uh, live time, or live comp. And what we're going to want to be doing is doing live comp. That's where we're going to be doing this demo in. And further, if you hit the menu button, it gives you your settings for the live comp settings. So you can go anywhere from a half a second all the way up to 60 seconds long for this exposure. And I'm gonna explain what this all means here in just a second. Let me get this back to a half a second and switch my camera back on here. So what I'm gonna do is when I go out and I photograph and I wanna get my camera settings for live comp, normally what I'll do right off the bat is I'll, I, I shoot in manual mode almost all the time, but if you're shooting an aperture priority or shutter priority, you know, get your ISO settings all set, get your shutter speed and your f-stop and get a good exposure. So, you know, check your histogram, make sure, you know, all the normal things about getting a good exposure uh, applies to live comp. And then make sure that the exposure is gonna la is going to be anywhere from that half a second to 60 second range that live comp has. Also, focus, get your autofocus set right then and there, get your focus sharp, get your subject sharp, and then take the camera out of autofocus because the last thing you want to do is have that camera. It might all of a sudden do some autofocusing between exposures, especially if you're doing night sky stuff. Uh, and that'll mess up your exposure. It'll mess up your photo or it'll mess up your focus and thus uh, mess up your photo. So 
steps, get your exposure. Remember what your settings are for your shutter speed. Focus. If you're in autofocus, get your focus, uh, your subject sharp, then take it out of focus, and then go in and get it into live comp. And then you're going to leave your f-stop the same as what it was in your uh, test photo. And then you're just going to adjust in that settings that I showed you in the menu, shut, set your shutter speed. And then what's going to happen is you're going to then take a photo. You're going to take a photo. Let me switch back to that right over here. And I'm going to take a photo. And it's now ready for composite photo shooting. So it already took a uh, base photo. And then now it's going to keep on increasing that exposure. And I'm actually, if the scene sounds a little confusing, it's going to be a lot easier once I show you a demo. So stick around. In a little while, I'm going to actually show you a demo, a live demo here in my studio on how this works. And it'll make this super clear. But I just want to give you the basics here because now I'm going to go through a whole bunch of photos and scenarios on why and when you would actually want to use live composition. So go ahead and throw comments in the, uh, in the question. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to my computer. And we're going to go through a bunch of photos that I have here. Now, this is a photo that I was just uh, in, in my backyard, just playing around, just testing some things. And this is what the photo looked like as, as I shot it. And I was getting my settings ready to do, to do a live comp. And you may not be able to see it in this shot, but there are a couple small little stars in there. Well, I put it on live comp and did a longer exposure. And then here we are, we have these star trails. And if we take a look at uh, just my metadata on this, I was shooting at ISO 200. This was at dusk, so it wasn't full dark yet at F3.2. And I had it set for five second exposures in that live comp. Let's go ahead and take another look here. This is at the Tetons. And again, this was just a test photo. I mean, we still had red lights on, so you can see some of that red light spilling over in the foreground. No big deal. Just testing a photo, getting my base exposure all set. And then I went ahead, and this was probably about a 45-minute combined exposure with the live comp. And I actually then ended up straightening that out, straightening the photo out from the fisheye to get a nice image here. The lights on the bottom are cars traveling by. And then I'm focused on, you can see I'm focused on the North Star up here. And so when you're doing night sky photos, if you focus on the North Star and have that image in there, because of the Earth's rotation, you're going to have a circular motion going around that North Star until you get way towards where the horizon, or I'm sorry, the equator is uh, relative to where you are shooting from. And then that's going to end up going into straight lines. So think about your exposure, look for the North Star, or I'm sorry, think about your your composition when you're doing these night sky photos and do you want to have those circular stars so if you want to have the circular star trails look for the north star if you don't make sure you're at least uh, 90 degrees away from that uh, north star and then the, the trails will get uh, straighter let's go back and look at some more photos now this i was photographing out in the desert in arizona and i had some moonlight but then i was also using a uh, little handheld light just to light up these saguaro cactuses just a little bit more, uh, just to help with the moonlight, to give it a little bit more definition. And then I went ahead and did about a 40, 45 minute exposure with the live comp. And what's really cool is that, you know, here I, here's the North Star again, got this great circular pattern. But then I also had some clouds that were going through and made this really nice sweeping motion going across the sky. Now you can also see I had some planes. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, air traffic in North Scottsdale, Arizona. So I had to do some photo work, Photoshop work, get rid of all those star, uh, plane trails. And then here's my finished photo from that. Let's go ahead and take a look. This was, uh, we had a fire out here in uh, Bozeman, Montana last year. And I used live comp on the fire. And this was photographed at night getting the star trails. And uh, this may look a little bit pixelated on your, uh, on your screen here, just on the resolution, but you can see here that those star trails do look really good when we zoom right in on the, on the image. And let me get rid of that. Here's another example, again, going right at the North Star. And this was up in Northern Montana with the Northern Lights and with the, with the star trails. And I was also using a little bit of a light on this, uh, on this old church as well to give that a little bit of illumination. This was photographed, uh, almost all the photos that you see here uh, in this presentation were photographed with either my EM-1X, my EM-1 Mark II or III. This one here was photographed with the EM-10 Mark IV that has live composition. And this was kind of neat because 
I have all this light over here is from the moon rising to off my uh, left hand shoulder, giving me really nice illumination, almost daylight illumination in the foreground with some nice star trails from the live comp in the sky. Now we were talking about, uh, let's go back here. So we're talking about now we're going to transition into using live comp outside of the night sky, but now into sort of the sunrise and sunset times of the day. And I love doing this too, because uh, you, know, you don't need any filters still when the light is, you know, just starting to get a little bit brighter at sunrise or getting a little bit darker at sunset. And this is where you can get really creative with start with, uh, I'm sorry, with cloud trails. And let's go ahead and take a look at what I'm talking about here. This was photographed in Grand Teton National Park. And this was uh, in the early morning light. Sun's just starting to get up. Uh, I had actually spent the whole night photographing the night sky. So might as well stick around for a sunrise and see if anything can happen. And I noticed the clouds and I was like, okay, well, let's see what kind of a pattern they're gonna make when you do the live comp. And it all depends on the way the wind's blowing and the way the clouds are going. And this was the shot that I got from that. And I just love this. You get these nice rays from the clouds. The clouds were moving from here, moving on up. You can see from here, they started here, moving on out. Just this really nice streaking pattern to it. And then of course, with that nice warm sunlight on the clouds there, made a really exciting photo for me. Now, when you're going ahead and working on live comp, you know, one of the, one of the things to do is practice when you're at home so that you know that you can do this when then go out in the field and all of a sudden the light's amazing and you want to nail that shot. So this is this next couple of photos we're going to take a look at. That's exactly what I was doing was just practicing at home. And I just saw the sky out here. Sky looked pretty decent for a uh, for a. Uh, live comp. And what I mean by decent is that I had some solid clouds in the background, but then see these little darker clouds. Now, you, you know, light comp is going to change the pixels and usually the brighter pixels are going to record. But I've also seen when you have this inverse here with the light and then with the dark in the foreground, you can get some really cool effects too. And let's take a look at that. And so this was a photo that I then processed afterwards. And it's really cool with the, with the live comp, I think with the, with the clouds that, you know, you can have a lot of fun with the post-processing, you know, it, it gives it just by the nature with these streaking clouds, it gives it almost like a painterly look. And, you know, I, I just had a lot of fun with this image and just having this real nice sort of really strong pastel coloring to this image. Now, there are also going to be times when uh, the image is a little bit too bright. And these next couple images I'm going to show you, the, uh, the sun was still in the image. And so I couldn't really do live comp yet. I, and now I'm going to show you a way that you can in a little bit. But without getting into any filters at all or anything like that, if you have the sun in your image, you're going to have to wait just a little while. And I'll show you what happened when I did do that. So I'm out here in Missouri on a uh, corporate photo shoot, and this was, uh, wanted to get this uh, old chapel, and I wanted to try some live comp. Again, I'm looking at the sky, and there is a lot of cloud cover, but I, there's all these little tiny clouds too that I had a feeling might work for a live comp shot. But because the sun is so bright right now, I wasn't able to do it yet. So here it is again, sun's getting a little bit lower into the horizon, just about ready to set getting a little bit darker. And I was like, okay, this is good. As soon as that sun completely disappears, then I can go ahead and get my live comp shot. And that's what happened. And then, I mean, check out the sky up here. Just amazing. And you can see it really bright here. And my settings on this, I mean, I was, I couldn't have gone any lower. I was at ISO 64 at F22 for a half a second. So, you know, if this image, if the scene was any brighter, I would have blown out my highlights down in this area here. So, you got to get get that timing just perfect right when the sun is setting. And as soon as that sun disappears, you should be in some good shape exposure wise. Here's another example of that. Now I'm photographing. This is in the Tetons. And you can see over here the sun is setting. It's, it's too bright over here. So I can't do a live comp yet. But I look over here to the right and I'm like, oh, well, this is looking really cool. So all I did was I shifted my camera 90, 90 degrees to the right. And look at the scene that I found right over here. Again, with these nice painterly clouds reflecting in the water, great color, and then, uh, you know, perfect image right there. And then here's a sample just at home uh, in my backyard and just some really soft clouds, barely visible, just streaking across the sky, giving a nice little interest into the sky. And then here, this was a crazy sunset out in uh, Arizona. 
The sun had just gone below the horizon. I had these really big spotty clouds all over the place that just gave this incredible streaking pattern to the sky. Now, fireworks. This is another time where, I mean, live comp is just awesome, awesome, awesome for fireworks. And the, the thing is so great is that when you have it set up, you know, you just, you just watch in the back of your screen and it's like, okay, I got a whole bunch of fireworks. And then you just stop the exposure whenever you want to. Now I'll give you some uh, advice when you're photographing um, um, fireworks, underexpose a little bit more than what you would think normal, because you want to keep all that rich color in the fireworks. If you overexpose, you lose that color in the fireworks. It's not great. So underexpose a little bit. And, you know, I'm usually underexposing maybe a stop, maybe even two stops. Uh, just to make sure that I get all that color in the fireworks. And let's go ahead and take a look. Now, this particular image here, um, this was actually, this was in Bozeman, Montana. And so this was the fireworks before the main show. So, you know, the main show, they, they have the fireworks when it's completely dark, but then everyone in the neighborhood, they're all lighting off their fireworks. So I was like, all right, this makes for a great photo opportunity. Notice the car trails along the very bottom over here and these fireworks. But let me show you, I ended up, recording this with my iPhone and uh, we can see exactly how that photo was built. So I'm going to go ahead and, and hit play here. And uh, sorry about that audio there. So we can see the fireworks being just formed right on the back of my camera. This is how live composition works. It's so amazing. And, you know, notice how my base exposure is staying all the same. The only thing that's changing is just all this new light that's being introduced. And that's what the camera is recording. And we can see here I'm doing half second intervals. And it did that for about 45 seconds. And again, this was the finished photo. Let's go ahead and I have another example here. Now, on this photo here, on this example, watch just above here. You'll see this is the tip of my camera, and you'll see some of the fireworks going off. And then, you know, a half a second later, you'll see them being recorded on the back of my camera screen. Let's go ahead and play through that right now. So right on the top there, getting those fireworks in. And let's go ahead and take a look at that finished result. Just unbelievable. I, I, this is so much fun. If you haven't tried live comp with fireworks, you know, as soon as, as, soon as there's an, uh, another fireworks display, get out there and do it. And here's a shot during the grand finale of the uh, fireworks in Bozeman and another shot of the grand finale as well. Okay, so now we're going to go into, we've talked about everything that we've done so far that we've talked about, you can do with no special filters at all or anything like that. The light is dark enough for all those images where you don't need any other filters. Now, the filters that I'm talking about is when you're photographing in the middle of the day when the sun is really bright. Remember in live comp, the slowest uh, or the fastest shutter speed you can have is a half a second. Now that's not gonna work, you know, even at ISO 64, at F22, a half a second in the middle of the day, your photo is gonna get overexposed. So then you have to use what are called solid neutral density filters. And try and put that up there right that so you can see. Now this one here is actually a variable one, so I can adjust the intensity of that. And I think this one goes to maybe uh, two to 10 stops. Uh, and then they have solid neutral density filters as well. This is a solid 16 stop. and. Uh, I would recommend if, if you wanted to get the variable one, get one that goes up to 10 stops. The 16 stop is actually, I think, almost maybe a little bit overkill. If you got like a 10 to 13 stop, I think that's going to work good in most daylight situations. So basically, all that filter is, it's shades of gray. It darkens the, the view from your camera so that you can use slower exposures during the day. And let's take a look at how that handles when we go into live mode using that. So here's the photo during the day in the Tetons, and we can see it was a windy day, and you can see some ripples on the water. It's got some really cool clouds. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that's going to do in a live comp setting. And check that out. Look, it actually even smoothed the water, got this cool pattern in the clouds. Now, here's one thing to pay attention to. See this? Uh, you can see some little gaps in the clouds here. Now, this was a really windy day. And when you have a really big windy day, you will see a, some small little gaps. And this is between each one of those exposures that the camera is doing. It's using the electronic shutter, but even with the electronic shutter, there's just a fraction of a delay. You'll notice that when the clouds are moving really fast, you really shouldn't notice it when they're going slower. 
And to me, I mean, it, it doesn't bother me seeing that. Um, but just, just be aware of that uh, when you're taking photos. Now, here's another shot in the Tetons. And this one, it's a raw file. It, it doesn't look great. Now, this is also part of the problem with using the solid neutral density filters is that they can impart a color cast. Now, usually it's a solid color cast, and you can correct for that in post-processing. The less money you spend on the solid neutral density filters, the more prone they are to color casts. If you're shooting in raw, you should be able to get rid of that color cast, no problem in post-processing. But I wanted to show you what that looked like. And then when you go ahead and post-process the photo, you get something like that. And this was from that cloud formation above the Tetons. And then looking at the clouds like that with the live comp, and then going a little bit wider with my lens, and even more streaking going on up on top here. For me, this photo is kind of interesting, but not one of my favorites, but just because there were so many clouds all bunched in here together that what ended up happening was it didn't give me a whole lot of different definition down here. I much prefer the streaks up in this area here. That's what I'm really looking for when I'm doing the live comp during the day with clouds as opposed to in the center here. Here's another example here. Got these big puffy clouds over here. What does that look like when we get into live comp? This is what I'm talking about, getting more of that painterly brush stroke look to the sky. Here's another example, some, uh, some big clouds. This is actually on the same day, those same type of clouds. And then converting that into black and white, really nice dramatic effect for that image. And this one here, I was just testing this. I was like, okay, life comp probably isn't going to work on this photo. Really, really cloudy. But there is a little bit of definition going on in the sky. And it actually did a pretty decent job. Actually, it wasn't too bad. It actually surprised me. I was able to get some nice subtle streaks to the sky. And honestly, I mean, to me, that makes for a more interesting photo than if I had processed this one and, you know, just called it a day. You know, just having that streak in the sky even though it's minimized compared to some of these other shots that I'm showing you, it, it really gives some interest to the image for me. Now, even when you don't have a whole lot of clouds, you know, I got just a couple clouds over here. Let's see what we can come up with. And I had a couple more clouds in this photo when I shot it and then converting it to black and white with these streaks coming right up in line over the barn really worked as an image for me. And again, practice when you're at home. You see any cool clouds going up in the sky? Go ahead and stick your camera outside. And, you know, even if it's not a shot that you might, you might not even post online, you know, go ahead and practice. The more you practice at home, the better you're going to be when the time, when you, you know, when you really need to be good at it and get that winning shot. Now, Live Comp is also awesome for lightning. I have not had an opportunity to photograph much lightning, but Live Comp, you set your camera up just like always, you know, almost like basically like think of it as fireworks and, you know, just leave your camera sitting there. And then whenever a lightning streak happens, Live Comp is going to capture it right there. And this is what happened uh, right, right in the backyard of our home here in Bozeman. Incredible lightning streaks. Okay, so... Now we're going to start moving into some more of the creative creative ways of doing uh, of doing live comp. And this was stuff that I, I was like, okay, well, what can I do in the home studio? Because everything you know, we're talking about fireworks, we're talking about clouds and all that stuff. That's all outdoors. Well, what if you don't want to wait for the weather or wait for a fireworks display and you want to practice with live comp right in the home studio? I'm going to show you some things here that I was doing with the live comp. So we're taking a look at my setup here. I have a light in the back here. Uh, this was a loom cube with a, uh, with a red light. Got another loom cube with a, diff with a diffuser on it. And that's, that's it. And then I have an, an incense stick in the back here. And you can see the smoke going. So the red light over here is backlighting that smoke with the white light on the flower. And let's take a look, using Live Comp, what that ended up looking like. Pretty cool. Again, this white light lighting up the flower. You got that smoke in the background. And with live comp, you can just see that building. You see that smoke building in the background, and then you just stop it when you think you got a good photo. Here's another example. I got a more of a crazier setup here with extra lights and all that, and I still got the smoke. And let's go ahead and take a look at what the results were on this. Now, here's something for Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is coming up. So I took a rose, sprinkled it with some, with some water, got that smoke going in the background, using some different colored lights on the background on that smoke, giving me a couple different images that, that were really exciting that you, know, you can do right in the home with live comp. 
So this is now I'm kicking it up another level here in the uh, in the complexity. So I'm using a whole bunch of UV lights. Everything that you see here being lit is all from UV lights. I probably had oh, maybe like about five or six UV lights. And I have a flower that's floating in the top of a fish, fish tank. And I'm using neon acrylic paint. And I'm dripping that into the water. The neon acrylic paint is heavier than the water. So it slowly sinks down into the water. And I have my camera set up for a live comp to capture all of that. Here's another close up of the of the setup that I was doing here. So what does that look like once we get a finished photo? Look at this. Look at all these streaks from that paint just falling down and sinking. Really creative, really abstract things that you can do, you know, and also having a natural subject in there with all this abstract that you have on the bottom. Let's take a look at another setup here. This one's a little bit more difficult to see. I'm using a whole bunch again of UV lights. And actually, I have a better way to take a look at this. Now, I recorded this using uh, Olympus Capture. And let's take a look at what happens. Let me hit play here. And we are now doing, I had my camera hooked up to a computer with uh, Olympus Capture. And you can see this paint slowly dripping down, slowly sinking into the water. I had a rose that was submerged on the bottom of the water. And look at those streaks that are coming down and just giving this real nice abstract quality to the surrounding image. Hey, Matt. Mm -hmm. can, I, can I just ask a quick question? We're having a little bit of some video lag on YouTube and Facebook. Is there anything we can do to kind of maximize your output here? I think it might be an internet connection, but you're freezing up a lot on YouTube. And I just okay. wanted to... Is See if when... there's anything we can do. Your video's real pixelated. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Um, I don't, I'm not sure. I'm on a super fast connection over here, so I'm not... I'm trying to... Uh, is that isolated? Is everyone having that, or just some people having that? It seems like a lot of people are having it. I noticed it on my end, too. Sorry, guys. We're just... We want to make sure that you can see his videos really well and, and see his pictures, so... Yeah. I apologize for the little break here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm hardwired in, so I'm surprised that we're having an issue on that. Yeah, so, I don't... Is it possible that having so many... Here. Someone's saying it's not freezing on Facebook, but very poor quality. I'm on YouTube without a problem. Yes, it's pixelated, oh, so, so it's, it's, it's... Like it's it's all over the place. <laughs> Great. <laughs> oh, the internet. Yes, that's what it was, Nap. That's <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So some people are and some people it's working fine for me here in Kansas. Maybe some areas of the country is this time of day. That could possibly be it too. Um we are broadcasting in certain areas at um rush hour for uh for internet. But hi. Oh all right. Yeah. I just wanted to so, make sure you knew. I was, I was... Yeah, poor quality on YouTube, and YouTube is fine. <laughs> <sighs> Nothing okay, like so an exciting there, thing so with the uh, home quality on live. YouTube is 720. It could possibly be on the export settings that you're having it sent to YouTube. Possibly. Okay. But I will we may have to. That. Yeah. Sorry about the folks that are having some issues. Um, I think that we may even be having a, a, a backup recording of this too. Isn't that uh yeah. So, um, so we'll, we'll check that backup recording. I'm seeing it crystal clear sharp on my monitor over here as well. So sorry about that guys. If some people are having trouble and we'll see if, um, if we have a, a recording of this that we can then post at some other time, but uh, thanks for sticking around with us as we, uh, as we do get through this. This is live. This is proof that it is live. <laughs> yes. This is the caveat of home with Olympus live. <laughs> well, okay, I'm going to smaller screen and then it won't look so bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll let you get back to teaching. I'm out of here. Have okay, fun, guys. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. Um, looks like some people are having issues, some aren't. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, Plow through this, uh, well not plow through, but we'll, we'll get through this and uh, again, hopefully we have a recording of this that we can post a uh, little bit better version on afterwards. But uh, you know, definitely stick around here because we're live here right now and you can ask all questions and all that. So I'm gonna go back to the computer over here and we'll just continue hit and play on this as this live comp was working on the rows. 
And again, this is great. You just stop it whenever you think you got a really good image. And I stopped it at that point. And then here's another one too. This one's really cool. And now what's interesting too, is when you're watching this video, it is staggered. So I don't know if that's what some people are seeing in terms of the, uh, this isn't a smooth video because the live comp is taking pictures. Uh, I think I might have it set for every half second. So you see it and then it'll take a new picture. It'll add to it. And so it's, it is staggered when you're watching this view. And so let's go ahead and take a look at some results from that photo shoot that I did. And I mean, just look at the streaks coming around this rose that was submerged under the water with that paint. Same thing with this rose too, completely different look. And this one too, I think this one is one of my favorites with the sweeping going around, going around down on the bottom here. And I had a little bit of natural light. There was UV light in here too, but this one I used a little bit of natural light along the top. Okay, let me come back here. So now, uh, again, if you have questions, go ahead and throw those in. Now what we're going to do is go through a live shot. And let me go ahead and get some things set up here. And what I'm going to do now is set up this live shot that I have. And let's go ahead. What I'm going to be doing is I got a skull of a bobcat. Really cool. My uh, fiance, she's a wildlife painter. And so you wouldn't believe the skulls that we have in this house. She studies the anatomy and everything like that for her paintings. So, uh, so we're going to do some light painting on that skull. I got my uh, EM1X here and I got the uh, 12 to 100 uh, F4 lens. And I got some lights too that I'm going to be using for the light painting. And this is from Adaptalux. You might have seen it in some of my other shots. It's a really cool unit that has um, all these different lights that you can put on it. And basically all you do is just throw in a light. Now, let me get that in the right way. And it turns on right away. Let me uh, get that right into the camera view. It turns on right away and then you can do light painting. What I'm going to be doing is just moving this around here on the skull and I'm going to be watching it in live comp and we're going to see what it looks like. And so let me get this set up and let's go ahead and get this going here. And I'm going to put this on over here so you can sort of see me in a picture in picture view. Now, the first thing you want to do is I already told you, you go into manual and Use your autofocus at that point. Focus in on the subject, and let's see here. I'm focusing right on the uh, right on the right on the front of the skull. And what I'm doing in this shot here, I have studio lights on and everything like that. I mean, you saw how bright the uh, the skull looked. I need to really darken this image. So I have my settings. I'm at f18. Um, I think I'm at ISO uh, 64. Yeah, ISO 64. And this is at two and a half seconds. What I did was I did a test shot. And the blue that you see around there, I have my uh, highlights and shadows set up. So all that blue that you see around there just means that there is, it's absolutely pitch black in my image. I want to photograph my base image really dark for this shot because I want to then add in all the light that I'm using with all these colored sticks that I have here. So that's why I have my camera set up dark like this. Now, the other advantage of having this dark is that when I am... Um, when I am doing the light painting, because this subject is so dark, and again, it's only um, the, cam the live comp is only picking up new bright pixels, I can even end up having this part, this is black here, this can even go in front of my lens, it's not even going to see this, because this is so much darker than what the skull was, and all you're going to see, the, just the light painting is going to be happening, the color will be happening on the skull. So let's go ahead and let's take this into practice here and let's go ahead, get this all set up and show you what that looks like for real. Okay, so I'm gonna change my lights and I think I'm gonna start with the white light and we're gonna get that right on the foreground. Now what I have to do is that this unit sets it up at 50% brightness. So I have to lower the brightness each time I'm gonna be doing a shot. Okay, so I am now in live comp and I'm gonna press the shutter once, and I have this set up for half second uh, intervals, and it's now ready for uh, composite shooting, and I'm gonna go ahead and take it. Now, here it is, it's taken my base exposure, and I'm not shining any light on it yet, and look at how dark it is, which is perfect, because now when I start doing some light painting, I'm just gonna bring this in, and we can see here, I'm just 
adding just a little bit of white light just to the front of it, just to the front of that skull. And there we go. That's cool to start with. And let's go ahead and I'm going to switch colors and I'm going to go with red now. And again, I got to lower my intensity on that red. Okay, now I'm going to come in from the other side and let's go ahead and throw some light in that eye socket there. And maybe just a little bit in the back as well. And let's come in from this side too. And again, as long as I don't shine this light in the camera lens, then we're not going to, we're not, we're not seeing the, uh, the tip and it is in the frame on some of these shots. Let's go ahead and maybe add some blue and I got to lower the intensity on that blue as well. And let's go ahead and paint in some blue along the bottom. Oh, maybe just a little too hot on the blue on that. But let's go ahead now and we'll take yellow and gonna lower the intensity on the yellow again. And let's try and see, give a little bit of lighting to the back. There we go. There we go, right up on the top of the skull, maybe along the nose, and let's go right into the nose area there. And what's so cool is that, you know, you just do a little bit of light painting, back off, see what effect is having on the image. And then when you're done, you just go ahead and hit the shutter again and stop it. And then let's go ahead and take a look at that final shot. And again, just ignore the blue that's uh, flashing in the background there. That's just telling me that that's a pitch black image in the background. So that is a... Uh, you know, I'm showing you this on a small scale, you know, where can you use this on a larger scale? I mean, you know, think about going out at night and, you know, maybe you want to photograph an old barn or something like that. Well, you know, do that. So set up the exposure so that, you know, the barn is really dark and then you can actually be walking in through the image as long as you're blocking, you know, if you have your flashlight, let's say this is my flashlight and the camera's behind me and you're wearing dark clothing, no light is being shown on you, you can walk into the image and be light painting in certain areas in the image, run back to the back of the camera, see how it's going, and then keep on building your image, your light painting image from there. So practice in the studio, see what you can do in the studio, and then go ahead and take it outside live. And, uh, and hopefully this, um, this whole presentation gives you some ideas to think outside the box a little bit with live composition. And I'd be interested to hear any other ideas that you have. I know, you know, another popular thing would be, you know, like doing car trails and things like that. But, uh, you know, it'd be great hearing from you guys, uh, you know, any other creative ideas that you have for live composition. Again, I hope this spurred some ideas for you. Go ahead and try that. And, you know, think outside the box yourself and see what you guys can come up with. So let's go ahead and see what we got for uh, questions. Uh, I saw that, uh, Diane, uh, what was the manufacturer of lights? So it's Adaptalux. Uh, it's it A-D-A-P, Adaptalux, L-U-X. And they're, um, I believe they're in um, England. They're overseas from me in the United States. So it takes a little while to get it. Um, not super expensive, but it's, it's really cool. Uh, they have all these different colored lights. There's, you know, little um, bulbs that you can get on top of it. They even have some lower intensity UV lights that plug into that too. And this unit here, so it has uh, six uh, openings in it, or I'm sorry, five openings on it. So you can have five lights going on it at once. And uh, I have a YouTube video too, um, at Matt Seuss Photo, S-U-E-S-S -S Photo from about a year ago. And I show the Adaptalux uh, with the Olympus camera in action. So you might want to check that out on YouTube. Uh, see what else we got for questions here. And Michelle, you can come on up too if you want. And if you had any, um, if you noticed any questions that had come in before. Uh, Tom, vignetting on a variable neutral vent density filter. Yeah, it depends on how wide angle your, uh, your lens is, how thick the, uh, you know, this is pretty thick. Uh, see that right there. That is pretty thick. So if I'm at 12 millimeters, you got the widest on my lens, I might get some vignetting around the edges on that. Um, this here, this goes into a uh, bracket that I have that um, I think even with on, on my widest lens, I don't get any vignetting on it. So be careful of that. If you're using a fixed focal length, you know, be careful of that. You can also, like with this lens here, this was made for full frame cameras. So I can get a step down ring 
And then, you know, if I have a smaller lens, that lens is going to be just in the middle there with the step down ring. I might not get any vignetting on that at all. Uh, let's see here. Question, what is the best shutter speed to reduce the gaps in cloud comps? Sometimes I think a shorter shutter speed. Yeah, it's not really going to be the uh, the shutter speed. It's it's really the speed of the clouds. And I think you saw on some of my clouds, there was absolutely no gap at all. Those clouds were moving a lot slower. And basically, you know, the camera, no matter if you're taking a half a second exposure or a five second exposure, it's that time between those two exposures that it's just automatic. You know, it's it's a fixed thing between the uh, between the exposures. So if you have fast moving clouds, you'll see that gap more. If you have slower moving clouds, you you won't even see it, and you know you weren't even seeing it in the uh, in the fireworks images too. Uh, let's see here. What lens do you use for your Star Trail photos? Um, I use all, all sorts of different lenses. Uh, generally speaking, you want to start with an f2.8 or slow or faster. Now, I'm saying generally speaking, you know, that's, that's perfect for when you are out with no moon at all. Now, when you have a moon out there, you can get away with an f4 lens. And, um, you know, because you, know, you have some more light that's, excuse me, that's going on in the sky. So a lot of the darkest ones that I that I showed you in that presentation, they were photographed with the uh, with a 12 meter 12 millimeter 2.0. Uh, my the eight millimeter fisheye 1.8 is a favorite one that I use, um, and I got the uh, 7 to 14 2.8. So those are usually my my standard lenses for the night sky. And you know this 12 to 100 when the moon comes out, you know you can get away with uh, with using that. Um, let's see here. So since you can take your time between Sally's asking on Facebook, so you can take your time between the colored shots. Couldn't you just put different colored plastic or mylar in front of a small black flashlight and stick it on? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I had these colored lights, so it made it really easy for me, but yeah, you know, you can go down, honestly, go down to like staples and get those. And I've, I've done this before. It works great. Go down to staples and get those, um, those plastic um, folders that have all different colors. You can get like an assortment of colors. And for like 10 or 15 bucks, you get a whole assortment of colors, just cut them. I've, I've cut them to size and put them on top of flashes before. Um, you can put it on a flashlight. Um, you know, I would go with, you know, LED lights and, uh, and try that. That would definitely work. I always use the half second time. When did you change it to other times? It all depends on the exposure. So, you know, if you're always using the half second exposure time, you know, that's, um, again, it's going to depend on your, 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 the brightness of your, or darkness there of, of your uh, scene. There was some of those um, sky trails, I think I was using 30 and 60 second exposure times, trying to keep my ISO down and with the lens wide open. Um, I'm trying to see here. Let me see if I can pull up my computer real quick and show, go through a couple of those settings on the star trails. So like, for example, this one here with the uh, Aurora, um, I'm at ISO 1250. And so I was at 1.8 wide open and those were 30 second exposures. And let's see here. Let's go. The, uh, this one, I had a little bit of a moon out there. So see how I was able to drop my ISO down to 640 and my f-stop at 4.5 at 20 seconds. And I was probably using the 12 to 100 lens. Um, I may not see in the uh, lens, but I'm pretty sure I was using the uh, 12 to 100 lens on that. And let's go ahead like on another, like on this real dark one here. And there was just no moonlight at all. So this is ISO 1600 at f2.0. I was probably I was using the 12 millimeter 2.0, or no, actually I was using the 8 millimeter. Sorry, the 8 millimeter 1.8. But I was shooting it at f2.0, and those were 60 second exposures. And let me see if got any other questions. Forgot to mention fireworks. Let me see here. Let's go ahead. That's a good point. So that was, uh, who was that? Rob from Facebook asking about fireworks. Let's go ahead and grab a couple of those. So this shot here that we saw the video on, we were at ISO 200 at F22. 
at a zero point five uh, half second. And um, you know, I don't always shoot at f twenty two, but I you know I don't I'm not afraid to either. Um, you know, some people talk about the fraction and things like that. I mean, I never really find that much of a sharpness loss on uh, when shooting at f twenty two. Um, all the way. So I did it on that shot there. Let me see what I did if I had changed my settings at all for this. This was shot at F13, and this was a one second interval at ISO 64. And let's take a look at this one here. Probably different settings that shot at a different time. Okay, yes, yeah, so this is at F22 again, half a second at ISO 200. Hey, Matt, so we do have a question while you're reviewing photos. If you could mm -hmm. review some of your cloud and sun sh sunset shots, even. Sure. So we're looking <laughs> At the for end some... of the day for me, I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Uh, so during the day, uh, so taking a look at this one here. And again, this was, you know, I was talking about those gaps. You can see those gaps. Those clouds were moving. We saw the ripples in the water. So we were looking at uh, ISO 500 at f6.3, and I was using 40 second intervals on that. And uh, let's go ahead, let's take a look at something like this here. This was uh, ISO 640 at f14 and one second intervals. And these clouds, these were, I remember these clouds, they were moving pretty slow, so I didn't really have any gaps on that. And let's go ahead and look for some more where did I have those? Okay, so this one here. These clouds were moving slow, not seeing those gaps. A half a second at F11 at ISO 64. And this one here. Uh, I showed you this one, I think, already. ISO 64 at F22 at a half a second. And we'll pull this one up at ISO 64, F14 at a half a second. So I hope that helps. And uh, you guys will also notice, too, um, if you go to my Instagram on shots that I always do with uh, my Olympus camera at Matt Seuss Photo, um, the ones that I do, particularly with my Olympus camera, I'm always usually putting the settings down on that. So, uh, you know, if you have any questions on, you know, settings, where to get started in the ballpark at all or anything like that, check out my photos on Instagram and look in the comments section. And again, most of the time I, I do give you the, uh, the exposure settings and lenses used and, and all of that. Uh, Sue, yeah, I was just saying, how do you work out the base shot, set up the fireworks as they can all change just as you, yep. Okay. So what I did was when the, uh, the, the pre-show, when the neighborhood people were lighting up their fireworks, I just did a whole bunch of tests and, uh, start, you know, started nailing down the exposure. And then as the sky got darker, I just made some slight modifications to it. And again, I was underexposing by quite a bit. I didn't want to overexpose to lose that color. So almost any time you're at a fireworks display, uh, especially on the 4th, you'll have some people firing off fireworks uh, right off the bat there, you know, before the main show goes. So get your practice shots in first and then dial in that exposure. And then by underexposing your image slightly, you know, one to two stops, that helps for some of those big blasts that are just so bright. Um, I mean, there's some that, that are just going to be so bright and you, you can't do anything about it. But um, but underexposing by a stop or two will help probably about 85 to 90 percent of those bright ones still be within range that you can get some detail on. And again, you know, use my settings that I just gave you on this video as a starting point, too. And you should be really, really close to, uh, you know, any fireworks anywhere you're, you're at. OK, did you see, uh, Michelle, did you see any other Big questions coming in. Not any huge ones. We're seeing a lot of similar questions. And I know that we have gone through and we've been trying to keep up with you guys in the comment <laughs> section. Forgive us. There was a lot of people viewing tonight, which is great. We will be going through and answering questions as we go along um, over the next couple hours. We'll get your answers. Um, we are here for you. Um, I know there's a lot of info going into one night and there's a lot of you guys asking a lot of similar questions, which is great. <laughs> We're happy that you guys are learning with us. It's so awesome to have you guys all here and be a part of it. And, you know, we're all kind of learning this new live streaming world together and we appreciate all your time and, and 
dealing with us despite our small hiccup tonight, but um, we just had a really, really good time. And I agree with uh, Matt on the fireworks. I live and and breathe for fireworks with live composite. That's my favorite use for that. <laughs> and I think so you're, many you're, you're, artistic you're, things that you can get from that. I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're out there, you know, experiment with a wide lens, experiment with a with a telephoto lens or a medium lens. You know, it, you, you don't always need the full firework. And I think some of my favorites are, you know, just getting parts of the firework. I mean, you know, they, they look like flowers in a sense. Mm -hmm. Well, and it takes so much of the guesswork out of it. That's one thing that I just really love about it is you can kind of see it building, you know. I'm I'm mm -hmm. super old school from the days of having to just kind of hold your shutter open and hope that you got something good. So being able to see it build live on your screen or if you're using the app is so helpful and awesome and no more overexposure, right? It's great. <laughs> so are you telling me that old school is holding the shutter down for a long time? Now I'm old school and I remember having to shoot it on film and not seeing mm -hmm. my results for a couple of days. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. We used to do light painting when, in the early days of digital when you had to just guess, and that was terrible. Yeah. I, I yeah. was not brave enough to try that with film. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, you know, if anyone who did shoot film, you know, they and did studio work, I mean, you can relate to this. I mean, you know, back in the day, we used to use Polaroids. And so when we were doing a studio shoot and doing all these different crazy lights and everything like that, we had a Polaroid camera that had the same ISO sensitivity as the film that we were shooting. And so you'd take a Polaroid and make sure that you got your exposure right. So with digital, I mean, it's so easy and it doesn't cost you anything but a couple seconds to just literally think about it. Take a Polaroid, take a test exposure, look at your settings. And, you know, especially if you're working in manual mode, it's, it's so easy to then just make slight modifications because then you're making those modifications and changes. You got that Polaroid image to reference and, you know, it doesn't take you long once you do a little bit of practice to nail down your exposure doing that. But yeah, take tons of test photos. Don't worry about deleting them out in the field, delete them on the computer later, but just dial in that exposure as quick as you can and you'll be good to go. Thank you. And a lot of people are asking about the replay. If you're watching this live on Facebook right now, it will live on our Facebook page. Um, and I believe also our YouTube page, but I want to verify that and not lie to anybody. But yes, it will live um, on our Facebook page. You'll be able to um, rewatch this at your leisure or share it with your friends who haven't tried live composite yet, but want to. Um, and we just really want to say thank you to Matt. He's kind of, you are my guinea pig for my Home with Olympus, our Home with Olympus program, having these live awesome educators come on. So thank you so much for being <laughs> my test subject. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, I'm, I'm just glad all my different appreciate... camera angles and switches work and everything like that. If they're a little fuzzy, that's okay. But I mean, <laughs> I would hate to have all been all of a sudden been talking about a photo and you, you, you can't see anything. So. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, well. Oh, good. We're getting so many great um, comments saying thank you, Matt. Thank you so much for being here. And that is so awesome of you. And I really just appreciate your time and hanging out with us tonight. Um, and for everyone out there, we will also be back again in two weeks time, uh, Thursday, the 25th. It will actually be at 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, so check out your favorite um, Facebook or YouTube, your favorite place to stream us. And we will be back hosting another session. So definitely come check that out. And as always, um, we have our Home with Olympus group sessions available where we focus on different topics um, for small group education. Those are hosted via Zoom and hopefully somebody is following along and will post the link to that in the comments for me, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, and just, yeah, thank you so much for your time tonight, Matt. I really appreciate your time. That was awesome. Yeah. It was a hey, great presentation. You. You know, thank you everyone for, uh, for coming in live. And, you know, if you're watching this on the replay, thanks for watching that on the replay and a lot of fun and uh, hope to do it again soon. Yes. I hope that we can have you on here soon again. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you for joining Home with Olympus. Bye.